three links walk into a bar. Yeah, I don't have a punchline for that, but we're gonna build some navigation. What you're looking at here is some static HTML. It's just a non-functional bit of navigation. And we're gonna go ahead and link all this up dynamically in Statimic and uh, hook up the template tags. Let's jump over to our code editor. And you can see here, we have this partial tag. This is an include. We're basically gonna take the contents of another template and pull it in here. This helps keep our layout file from getting too gigantic. So let's go over and take a look at this partial. And you can see that it's just here in your views directory, resources, views, nav. And this prefix, this underscore prefix is just a naming convention to indicate that it's a partial. So you don't actually have to use that uh, that underscore here in the tag, uh, Statimic knows. All right, that's just a way of seeing them organized. You can also put them in a partials directory and that will do the same thing. You would not have to do partials nav or anything like that. That's just kind of some auto completion uh, convention. All right, back to the code. Static HTML, we have the top nav bar here and then we have a child navigation bar down underneath. And let's go ahead and build out some pages in our pages collection. That way we can actually do something with them. Let's head to the control panel. We are here in the pages collection. So collections slash pages. And this is that default pages collection. It is a what's called a structured collection. And you can tell that it's a structured collection by the way that it is. It's, it's structured. It's like a nav tree. There's a uh, regular collections look like this and you can toggle between the tree and list modes. Um, but here's just like a list of all the uh, entries in a collection and you can show which columns are available. But here in the tree view, this is a structured collection. And this lets us know that we can use this order on the front end of the site to build a nav. So let's create a few dummy entries to work with. Uh, the content and the layout of this page is not important for the purpose of this episode. So let's just create a you know, about page. We'll choose the default template down here. And let's switch this over to uh, create another. All right, so we'll create a team page. And then we're gonna create some child pages underneath that. So maybe like a red team and a blue team. I'm gonna hit Command S and that will also save. Hit pur uh, purple team. All right, then we'll go back to the pages and we're gonna go ahead and move red, blue. Let's get that kind of lined up right there and purple and save that. Okay, so now we have a structure and we can use this on the front end to loop through and pull those pages into a template. So let me switch our tab over here to the front end and dive back into code. All right, let's start with the top level links. We're gonna go ahead and get rid of two of these dummy ones and we're gonna use a tag pair to loop through those entries. So it's uh, that tag is the nav tag. So it's gonna be nav colon collections because we're gonna grab the structured collection and pages. And then we're gonna go ahead and close that down here. I like to indent my code as if static tags were actual HTML elements. This will, if you're super picky about your rendered output, it will change the indentation level, but I think it's more important that your code is easier to read for you as the person who edits it than someone who might be you know, nitpicking the output of your HTML. So that's just a little side note. All right, now we need to actually pull the data from those entries. So we're gonna put two variables in here. The first is gonna be the URL of each entry. And then this would be the title of that page. So let's do this. I'm gonna save that and head back to our browser and refresh. Okay, so we can see here that we've got home and that's not what I expected. So let's debug this. Yep, there it is. I went plural. This is nav colon collection colon name of collection. So there we go refresh and there we go about and team now if you're paying attention you may notice something here didn't the structured collection have three here there was like home about and team yeah so home pages the home specifically is a little bit of a special page uh, when you think about it it's both a child page and not a child page or sibling page of your top level entries so by default it's not included in that loop 
if we wanted to, we could include it by adding the parameter include home is true, refresh, and that would be there. So if you wanted to have that there, or you wanted this to be your home link, you know, your logo or your branding element, that's fine. It's up to you. That's just the easiest way to go about doing it. I'm going to take it out. Now, if we head over to the control panel, we can see that we can rearrange these entries. If you save that, head back over, refresh, you'll see that order changes. And go ahead and put that back because, I don't know, I feel like ordering these alphabetically for, for whatever reason today. Okay, so that's all dynamic. And you'll notice that we're only working with the top level pages here. So we're only looping through uh, each, you have to loop through each level independently. And I'll show you different ways about, uh, to go about doing that. Since we have, if you look at the, the template code here, we have completely different chunks of HTML that we want to work with for this style. So we could, we, if we wanted those child pages here, you can do stuff like if children, then loop through the children here and then close that out. You, know, you could do something that looked like this. And if we refresh that, that should look like a mess. Yeah, there, you know, you, you don't have that uh, indication that they are child level pages, but if we wanted to maybe see like text is small, just so you can see that, yes, those are those three entries underneath the team. You could just write your CSS and your HTML in a way that would make that a drop down, a mega menu, whatever you'd like. But we're gonna, we're gonna switch this up and move them down here. So rather than kind of jank around with, uh, you know, positioning, we're just going to run another nav tag down here. Uh, we'll just grab the opening and we're going to close it again here. Get rid of these extra entries and do the same thing. URL title, but we're going to use the from parameter. The from parameter lets us choose what the top level uh, page or element or item is uh, in this particular nav. So we're going to do from, uh, and then we're actually going to put a colon here. And this is uh, indicates that we're going to use interpolation. So we're going to um, tell it to look at the segment one variable, which is whatever this first level, like whatever this would be. So if you went to about or team, this is going to be your segment one. Okay. So you can see something's happening here. It's already working, right? So we've got we're, we're pulling from segment one and we are showing the child pages here. And if we wanted to, we could actually put that top level page here. Like if you wanted, uh, you know, you could put, let's see. Yeah, if we just added this and maybe said font bold, that would be the current entries because you're outside the loop, right? So if you wanted to show like, yeah, this is the team page and here's those sections, you kind of got a little bit of duplication here, but uh, maybe that context could help you. All right, now, if you notice, when we're on the about page, it does not have children pages, but it's showing something. So there's there's a reason for that. So what's actually happening here, and I'm gonna get rid of this for now, just uh, to keep our code simpler. We're gonna indent that, like I said I like. But anyway, let's just explain what's happening here. So the nav tag is creating a loop, and uh, we've no matter what happens, you're already kind of signing up for one instance of the loop. So if there's no entries, it sees, uh, Statomic will see these variables and be like, hey, actually, no, I, I know there's a URL variable and a title variable here. They're on the page. It's like the about URL and the about title. So what we can do uh, to prevent that from falling back and showing unwanted variables is we can use a condition inside that first instance and conditionally show this markup. So uh, there is a variable called no results. So if we did if no, no results, we could show that sub, that sub nav. All right, so if we, but if we had results, you know, we could do an else, an else here. Maybe we could have, um, like last, like with full H2 background black and just kind of hijack this element and show a black bar instead. So on the about page, no children pages and on the team page, children pages. So you can do some variation of this playing with the no results, uh, if else statements. Uh, there are some other variables you can work with, but this is a real simple one to do it. You could move the markup outside and, you know, kind of change stuff up that way, but we're just keeping it simple today. All right, next up in a nav, context is important, right? So let's add an indicator of which entry or which page we're actually on. All right, so we're gonna do that by adding a class. We could change the text color or add an underline 
or style it in some way. And here's a good way to do that. We'll start with the top level page. And inside uh, the class here, we're gonna add a condition. So if is, or actually we're gonna do is current or is parent in case you are in the team section, like on one of those child pages. And if that condition is true, uh, we're gonna add the class uh, text red 700 and uh, maybe we'll underline it. Let's see what happens. I broke it. I didn't close my tag pair, which is kind of a big no-no, but there you go. You know, that underline looks dumb. Let's just go with the text color. And then when you're on the team page, it should go over there. And there we go. You can kind of, you can use the same exact logic down here. And when you're on the blue page or the purple page, that will, this is using the, if, the is parent variable is being uh, set as true. And then this is the is current is being true right here. And that is uh, pretty, pretty flexible. All right, now let me explain what is going on here. You may not have seen this in text before. This is called a conditional variable. So everything in, at the beginning here, when you have this question mark equals sign, uh, this kind of Elvis looking operator, everything to the left of it is a condition. And if it's true, it will render whatever's to the right of it. Another way to write this would be if is current or is parent, we could close the tag and put this here and then do an, an end if close the if tag, right? Uh, but when you're doing this stuff in like conditions in line, having an open and a close tag, just, it looks kind of janky to me. Uh, syntax highlighters, I don't know, it just, uh, I, I struggle. I think this is a lot more readable having it contained inside uh, one uh, double braces, like inside one tag pair. Anyway, so there you go. We have a pretty good nav going. Now there are other ways to build navs. There's this whole navigation feature, which lets you create a nav of like out of links to entries in all different collections or hard-coded links or uh, non-link elements. So we can get into that in another video. This structured collection is pretty much the easiest way to get like a simple site built. So there you go.